In this video, you will learn five cadences you should use in your pieces. Welcome to this new video. I'm Ricardus and my job is to help you learning Renaissance music theory and to discover all the secrets about early music. In this video, I'm gonna show you five cadences you must know to use in your pieces. But what is a cadence? A cadence is a situation where all the voices finish what they are saying. This term comes from Italian. Cadenza, cadere, accadere, to happen. When we meet a cadence, it means that something is happening in all the voices. Before starting, I invite you to join my Telegram channel to keep updated on all my new videos, link in description. Let's see an example from my partita Herr Jesu Christ, Dig Zu und Svend for keyboard. This is the sixth variation. In this point, something is happening in all the voices. All the voices finish what they are saying. This is the cadenza. The cadence. So let's start with the first cadence. The first cadence is the simple cadence. It is the basic cadence. Its features, as you can see in the picture overlay, are the use of the tonic dominant tonic, or the first, the fifth, and the first degree of the scale, and only the use of the perfect chord. 3rd and 5th. Let's see the first example. We are in C major, so the first degree is C and the 5th degree is G. So... Very simple. In the second example, the two upper voices are inverted. And in the third example, I have the same thing, but the cadence finishes with the third in the top voice. As you notice, in the second and the third example, when the cadence finishes with the octave in the top voice, it is a perfect. When finishes with the third in the top voice, it is imperfect. The same situation we can find also in the minor mode. So let's read the first example of A minor. Let's invert the upper voices. Perfect, and now imperfect. Nice. The second cadence is the compound cadence. His main feature is the use of the suspension, 7th, 6th or 2, 3 in the reverse. In the example, you can read the three letters P, S and R. They mean preparation, suspension and resolution of the suspense. Look at the upper voices. We have a 6th, a 7th, a 6th and a 6th. The first is the preparation. Now we have the suspension, the real suspension. And then the resolution of the suspension. So let's read the first example. This is a perfect cadence because in the top voice we have the octave. The second example. This is a deceptive cadence because the bass moves on the 6th degree. Let's see also the reverse. This was perfect. This was imperfect. And this was deceptive. The same thing happens in the minor mode. We 
we have the suspension in the top vice. Also in the deceptive. Now let's invert the upper vices. Perfect. Imperfect. Deceptive. The third cadence is the double cadence. The double cadence is composed of the simple cadence plus the compound cadence. In the double cadence we have a long fifth degree bass. Now let's see the major mode. And now the minor mode. The fourth cadence is the gallant cadence. The main feature of the gallant cadence are the use of the parallel sixth in the top voices or parallel third in the reverse and the use of the passage of the fourth and sixth and third fifth. Let's play this cadence in the major mode. The reverse. Now in the minor mode. The reverse. The fifth cadence is the Neapolitan cadence. The main features of this uh, cadence are the only use in the minor mode, the sixth of the fourth degree of the scale is flatted and the diminished third between the flatted second degree and the sharped seventh degree. We are in A minor, the second degree is B and in this case, in this cadence is flatted. It is flatted only in the first chord, not in the second. In the second it returns natural. We can also use the gallant style for this cadence. Or the reverse. Well, this was the five most important cadences you must know and you should use in your pieces. I've prepared for you a PDF with all the cadences and all the examples that you can download from my Patreon page subscribing the Semibrevis membership. This PDF and all the PDFs of my video are reserved only to members who have subscribed a Semibrevis membership on my Patreon page. It's very important for me your support if you want more contents about harmony, counterpoint and early music theory. So go on my Patreon page, link in description and subscribe a membership. I hope that this video has been useful for you and I'm waiting for you in the next one. Bye! Do you want to download the PDF of this video? Subscribe the Semibrevis membership on my Patreon and have the access to all the PDFs of all my videos. Moreover, with the Brevis membership you can also send me your exercises and harmony realizations and I'll correct them for you.